Hello everyone and welcome to the ISCP webinar on cardiovascular issues associated with COVID-19, which has been organized by Professor Hasegawa on behalf of the International Society of Cardiovascular Pharmacotherapy. I'm Juan Carlos Gaski, Professor of Cardiovascular Science at St. George's University of London and a past president of ISCP. I am delighted and honored to chair this educational activity and allow me to very briefly introduce our excellent speakers and the important topics that will be addressed today. Professor Koji Hasegawa is Director, Division of Translational Research, National Hospital in Kyoto Medical Center. He's a clinical professor at the Faculty of Medicine at Kyoto University and is also a past president of ISCP. Professor Hasegawa's talk will be about myocardial injury in COVID-19. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the webinar of cardiovascular effects by COVID-19. Uh, I'm Koji Hasegawa from Kyoto uh, the past president of IUCP. Uh, thank you very much for uh, providing me the opportunity to speak about this important uh, topic. And today I'm going to speak about uh, myocardial injury in COVID-19. So much information is prevailing on COVID-19 from various sources, including research articles and internet news Please note that in reality, most data are incomplete. Further studies are needed for solid conclusion. There are no COIs to be declared. So today's topics, uh, the first will be the overview of cardiovascular effects by COVID-19. The second will be the myocardial injury in COVID-19. The third will be the what will happen in future after recovery from COVID-19. So COVID-19 called by SARS coronavirus 2 uh, initially outbroke in Wuhan, China and on March 12, 2020, WHO declared the pandemic. As of August 18, Cumulated number of patients worldwide exceeds um, 21 million, and number of deaths is more than uh, 770,000. And COVID-19 cases continue to increase all over the world, especially in USA, Brazil, and India. So this is the original data from China uh, of PCR confirmed patient in, published in February, and you can see the more than 80% of patient uh, symptoms are mild or no symptom. But some uh, cases progress to severe states and mortality is reported to be 2.3%. And many patients with mild or no symptoms do not know they are infected and therefore remain undiagnosed. So the mortality may be different from country to country, but the originally it was reported to be 2.3%. And uh, there are uh, classical risk factors for disease severity, the advanced age, male sex, obesity, smoking, hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, COPD, immunodeficiency, and cancer. And based on these risk factors, uh, two major pathological states, cytokine storm and coagulopathy causes massive pneumonia and pulmonary thrombus and myocardial injury. These will finally lead to the development of multiple organ failure and death. The SARS coronavirus to bind to a molecule called 
angiotensin combating enzyme 2 S2, uh, which combat vasoconstrictive angiotensin 2 into vasoprotective angiotensin 1 to 7. So this is a protective molecule uh, for cardiovascular system. And S2 uh, is abundantly expressed in the lung and cause massive pneumonia. This is a mainstream in COVID-19. S2 is also expressed in the heart, so uh, it causes uh, myocarditis. Uh, importantly, S2 is also expressed abundantly in vascular endothelium, then causes a thrombosis, which led to the uh, development of pulmonary and myocardial infarction. Let's go to the uh, topics of myocardial injury. Uh, there are many reports that troponin I or T levels are elevated in patients with COVID-19. And in this report, cardiac injury was defined as blood high sensitivity troponin I level above the 99th percent upper reference limit. And you can see the mortality was more than tenfold higher in patients with cardiac injury compared with patients without a cardiac injury. This is a simple comparison. And they also performed the multivariate Cox regression analysis. And ALDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, was the uh, uh, strongest. Uh, independent uh, predictor of death in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Odd ratio was 7.1. And cardiac injury, elevated troponin levels, was also the uh, important uh, predictor for death in COVID-19 patients. And odd ratio uh, was 3.4. And because uh, these two factors were very strong, uh, other uh, risk factors such as age, cardiovascular disease, COPD, renal failure, cancer, MT, propionic levels were not significant independent predictor of death in this analysis. So uh, ARDS and cardiac injury were very strong uh, predictive uh, factors for death in COVID-19. So this is a very important report describing the 18 COVID-19 patients with ST segment elevation in electrocardiogram. Among 80 patients, eight patients were diagnosed as myocardial infarction due to the obstruction of the epicardial coronary arteries. The other 10 patients were diagnosed as non-coronary myocardial injury. So without any evidence of obstruction of the epicardial coronary artery. After all, 13 of 80 patients died in the hospital, four with myocardial infarction, nine with non-coronary myocardial injury. So non-coronary myocardial injury is associated with poor prognosis. So the possible mechanism of myocardial injury were listed up here. Not all of them uh, are documented. But the first uh, possible mechanism is acute coronary syndrome due to the rupture of the atherosclerotic plate. And this is the usual uh, myocardial infection. There is also a case report of acute coronary syndrome due to coronary spasm. The second is the obstruction of myocardial small coronary artery due to the enhancement of coagulation activity. Now, there are many reports of the obstruction or thrombus formation in small pulmonary arteries in the lung, but uh, also there is a report of the obstruction of the small coronary artery. And good the third mechanism is the global ischemia resulting from hypoxia circulation 
insufficiency due to pneumonia and or shock. The fourth possibility is uh, myocardial damage caused caused by so-called cytokine storm induced by the strong release of inflammatory cytokine in the whole body. The fifth mechanism is the viral myocarditis caused by the direct binding of the SARS coronavirus to cardiac myocytes. Myocarditis uh, does not seem to be so frequent, but uh, there is a case report of fulminant myocarditis. So there is the viral, viral myocarditis caused by uh, SARS coronavirus 2. And uh, this is also an important report of 39 consecutive autopsies cases from Germany. Uh, they examined the ex existence of uh, SARS coronavirus 2 in the heart. Less than 40% of patients, no virus was detected. On the other hand, more than 40% of patients, the a significant amount of uh, SARS coronavirus 2 was detected. Importantly, 5 out of 39 patients, a minus strand, negative strand RNA was detected. Uh, this finding indicates that. Uh, the replication of SARS coronavirus 2 occurs in the heart. So uh, they also examine the relationship between the uh, inflammatory cytokine gene expression and the presence of uh, virus RNA in the heart. The gene expression of inflammatory cytokines such as uh, GNF alpha, interferon gamma, cytokine ligand 5 and interleukin 6, 8, and 18 was significantly higher in heart with a large amount of virus than no virus heart. So uh, there was a, a significant relationship between the presence of uh, viral RNA and cytokine expression. On the other hand, infiltrate of inflammatory cells such as lymphocytes or macrophages was similar between a large amount of virus heart and no virus heart. So the presence of uh, uh, virus was not associated with infiltrate of inflammatory cells. So we cannot say myocarditis histologically, but uh, the presence of SARS coronavirus 2 in the heart was associated with the increased expression of inflammatory cytokines. What will happen in the heart after recovery from COVID-19? And this report describes the cardiac MRI findings in patients recently recovered from COVID-19. The time interval from diagnosis to cardiac MRI was 71 days, so more than two months and high sensitivity troponin T was detectable in more than 70% of patients. Um, abnormal cardiac MRI finding was observed in 78%. These cardiac MRI abnormal findings might uh, represent the scar of inflammation, but because uh, troponin T was uh, detectable uh, these abnormal uh, MRI findings might represent chronic myocardial damage. So there is a possibility that myocardial damage continues more than two months after recovery from COVID-19. Summary of myocardial injury in COVID-19. Uh, the ele elevation of blood troponin level, cardiac injury is strongly associated with death in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. And cardiac injury unrelated with epicardial coronary artery obstruction is frequent. And the SARS coronavirus 2 exists in the heart of died COVID-19 patients and is associated with inflammatory cytokine expression. Later than two months after the diagnosis of COVID-19, 
blood troponin was detectable uh, and abnormal cardiac MRI findings were observed in majority of patients. So there is a possibility that SARS coronavirus 2 continues to exist in the heart with inflammatory responses. A long-term follow-up will be required after recovery from COVID-19. This is my perspective and further studies are needed uh, to clarify this issue. Thank you very much for your attention.